yes, we already have a video about Quora ads targeting options, but that video is outdated. So to kick off 2021, I wanna refresh the video so we actually see all the targeting options we have in one of my favorite paid media platforms. We're gonna start off with audiences, because I feel if you're new to Quora, this is a good place to start to dip your toes in the water. Then we'll shift into the ad set setup so you can see the unique targeting options that are really only available in Quora. We're gonna get started so you can really see no matter what industry you're in that you're gonna find targeting options that are perfect for you. I'm in a placeholder account that we set up just for the sake of creating these videos. And I'm gonna be jumping around a little bit when talking about all the different targeting options we have for Quora ads. The first one I wanna start off with is audiences. And before we can add those within any campaigns, we have to create the audiences first. So to start building your audiences, go to the top navigation and choose audiences. Now this account already has a pixel on a website and it's already collecting users. If you wanna build website traffic audiences and you still need to add the pixel to your website, you need to go over to the pixels and events section in the top navigation first. And then you can click on the blue setup pixel button to get the information of how you can activate each one. But I'm not gonna get into that setup because this video is about targeting. So let's go back to the audiences page. There is one website traffic based audience already created, but let's look at the options we actually have. There are three types of audiences that you can create for Quora ads. The first one is website traffic. You'll have to name your audience, add an optional description, but here's the important part. By default, you can create an audience that's gonna target any visitor to your website. But we can see we have more options. We can target users who visited specific pages of the site. And when we choose that option, we're gonna see the URL contains, the URL doesn't contain, the URL equals, so you're kind of being very selective on which URL you're gonna build that audience from. There's visitors to specific, but not all pages of my website. So here we can still get specific with the URL that we wanna contain, but now this has an option to take into consideration certain user exclusions using the same URL contains rule. So that's the difference between these two. Since this is a practice account, I'm not getting any conversion actions or events set up, but you can create URL-based conversions like a thank you page, and you can also set up conversions with events or just standard event conversions like an add to cart action, and then create audiences from those specific events or conversions. So in this account, when I was playing around for another video, there is a custom event for people who filled out the contact us form on this particular website. If I wanted to, I could create an audience from that to use either as an exclusion or possibly a next step marketing campaign. And the last option for a website-based audience is a custom combination. In this option, we get both included users and excluded users. But as you can see, as we keep adding new rules, we can make this audience pretty complex. And the more rules we add to this specific audience, the smaller this audience is going to be. And besides just adding rules to the initial group, we can add other groups to this audience as well. These audiences can get pretty layered. Most likely you're not gonna hop into this one right away, so I'm not gonna spend too much time in it. But if I'm heading back, we can look at the time windows for this audience. A Quora audience can go up to 180 days, similar to Facebook. Depending on how much traffic you get, or in certain cases, how many people perform the event that you're recording for this website-based audience, it could take up to 24 hours for that audience to be calculated. That's why I highly recommend setting up your audiences right away, right when you create your Quora Ads account to start building as many audiences as possible. So when you're ready to actually go in and create your campaigns, your audiences will hopefully be populated and ready to be used. But if we head back, I'm gonna skip one and jump down to list match. List Match is Quora's version of Customer Match, taking a list of your emails and uploading it into the platform. For List Match in Quora, you can only upload emails and you don't need any specific header. Literally one column with one email per row. You have a few options for hashing, but that's really all you can do. Choose your name, upload your file, create your List Match audience. The recommended size is to have at least 200 users within that list. So upload as many as you can. Your file can contain up to 4 million rows. Again, you don't need a header. So try to upload as many as possible so you can build a big enough list to use right away. And after you have website traffic and List Match audiences created, we can create lookalike audiences. Similar to all the other PPC channels that have lookalikes or similar audiences, we need to have a strong root audience. I only have this one selected, so I'm selecting my root audience of all visitors within the past 90 days. Most likely you're gonna wanna use something that's a deeper conversion action, right? Build lookalike audiences from confirmation pages, from specific events that people have taken on your website, or potentially a list match of recent converters or your overall customer list, potentially with a higher lifetime value. Your root audience size makes a huge difference of if you can create a lookalike audience in the first place. That's why I wanted to talk about website traffic and list match audience 
audiences first. If you want to create a lookalike from a website traffic audience, that audience must have at least 3,000 people built within that audience to be used for a lookalike. If you want to use a list match audience for your root audience, your list match audience must have at least 500 people in order to be able to use as a lookalike. So once you have that root audience created, you can then choose the lookalike percentage from 1% to 10%, letting Quora know how closely related or broad you want to have your lookalike target. A Quora ad account can only have 50 lookalike audiences created at one time. If you want to create new ones beyond that 50, you're going to have to go back and delete old ones. I really don't see you hitting that 50 lookalike mark right away, so don't worry about it, but I wanted to toss that out there. So now that we have our audiences created, let's jump into a campaign and look at how we can select our audience options as well as review the other ones we have not talked about yet. In Quora ads, your targeting is selected at the ad set level. So I immediately jump to a specific ad set. First, I wanna go over the primary targeting options. And first I'm gonna talk about the audience targeting again, because this is exactly what we went through in the audience creation. So if you wanna use your audiences that we just created as a targeting option within your ad sets, you can do that. There is my all visitors audience, the only one that I have created in here. Your list match and your lookalikes will also be created as an option for you to target. If we scroll down a little bit further, I can exclude audiences if I have one created. That's why it's important to create audiences from those confirmation pages. Upload current customer list to try to exclude those users if you're only trying to market to people who have not converted yet. And now we're done with audiences. I wanna go through some of the fun parts about Quora, and that is their targeting options that you can't get on any other channel. First, I'm gonna talk about contextual targeting. And within this column, I'm gonna start from the most specific targeting option, question targeting. If my particular account sells accounting software for small businesses, I can start typing in certain phrases or certain keywords, and Quora's gonna populate a list of questions if it is on the platform that's gonna apply to my search. Look at this first option. What is the best accounting software for small businesses? If that's exactly what my client sells, and they wanna get in front of anyone who's looking for answers to this particular question, this could be the best place to put your ad. And as you can see, I can just keep searching for new questions, keep adding them to the mix, and for every targeting option that you add, you're gonna see the potential weekly impressions off to the side. And look at the weekly impressions, less than 100 per week. So while question targeting can be the most specific and potentially could be the most valuable to you, odds are you're gonna see the lowest volume with question targeting if you are getting very specific. If you wanna broaden the reach a little bit, the next option under contextual targeting would be topics. All questions in Quora are grouped into topics. So if you're not seeing the volume that you want from specific question targeting, you can start researching specific topics. So initially my questions I was researching was about small business accounting, and those were giving me less than 100 a week. Now if I'm targeting all questions under small business accounting, one, it's gonna save me time from having to research all those questions manually, but then we see that my potential weekly impressions increased. Now I have verified traffic of 50 to 150 per week. As I start typing in small business software, I'd even complete my phrase and I already see a bunch of recommendations I can try if I want to broaden my reach beyond just accounting type targeting options. Instead of having to type this out all the time, I could just go to bulk ad, then I'll type in a keyword related to the topics I'd like to target, click continue, and then we get an idea of different topics I could target. We see small business advice. I could check the box if I definitely want to target it. We see another one down here, small business advice and strategy. I could check it as well, but if I want to research it more, I can just click on it and you will be taken to this specific topic page on Quora. Then you can go down and review all the different questions that show up under this topic to see if you want to have your ads placed on potentially any question that falls within this topic. It's a good chance to research before you actually start putting ads on anything. I'm just gonna target a few of these small business topics. Now look at the potential weekly impressions number. We went from a max of 150 to a max of 55 million. To be clear here, I haven't added any location targeting yet. We're pretty much targeting the entire world right now, so that's why the number is so huge. But that's another way to really grow your numbers. So right here, where my arrow is, we see the targeted topics, but right below we get other suggestions. There might be other ones you wanna add to the mix. And while you're setting up this particular ad set or potentially after the ad set has gone live, you can always go back in and remove certain topics. And if you wanna broaden your reach a little bit more, you could try keywords. So with keyword targeting, if you're running Google and Microsoft search campaigns, you're familiar with keyword targeting. But with Quora ads, if you look in this gray section I'm gonna highlight right here, we only get pure broad match or phrase match. To keep things a little bit more specific, I just added some phrase match keywords. 
And then we see the potential weekly impression share is a little bit bigger than the question targeting option that we went over. And this could be because while the questions I may have been looking up were related to accounting software, maybe someone answered a question that included these keywords, but the answers and other content on that page contain these keywords. It could be a similar related topic, but I didn't choose those questions for my targeting options. This could be a way to expand the reach a little bit, but keeping the keywords fairly relevant. Now, when you go to broad match, we're going to see that expand a little bit may or may not be something you want to test, but you do have that option. But if you really want to get some volume, but still maintain relevancy in your targeting options, that's when we can go up to topics. Now, everything we went through under the contextual targeting column, questions, keywords, topics, they're contextual because we're showing ads to people who are on these questions or answers within these questions at that very moment. Outside of audience targeting, for people who already potentially know about your brand, contextual targeting will have the deepest intent when trying to reach new users on the platform. If you feel that you've maxed out your contextual targeting options, that's when you may want to consider behavioral targeting. Because pretty much we get the same options as contextual targeting. Questions, keywords, and interests, which is pretty much the same thing as topics, and I'll show you. But behavioral targeting is people who have shown interest about the questions, answers, Potentially they've engaged with the question, answered it, voted it up, those sorts of metrics at some point in the past. Let me explain it. We'll start at the bottom again. Here's question history targeting. I'm going to try to find that same question I had for contextual targeting. Now look at that potential weekly impression share. Because I'm telling Cora I want to target my ads to people who have interacted with this question. Again, it could be just visiting the question page. It could be answering the question. It could be voting other people's answers up or down. Some sort of interaction with that specific question page within the past 30 days. I'm going to do this on purpose just to show you that your time window needs to be between 1 and 30 days. Even though Cora does update the volume for me, so that's pretty good to see within the next couple months. But I'm going to bring this one down to 30. So in my contextual targeting option, if I just want to target this one question, I'm not even going to get 100 impressions on my ad a week. So I can still get a very specific question out there, most likely still hitting a relevant audience, but I'm targeting users with previous engagement. So they're not going to be on this specific question page at the time. They can be off reviewing which electronics they should buy. They could be off reviewing which coffee maker should they buy and still see an ad for my accounting software just because I know they've engaged with this page at some point in the past. And now you're going to see where this is going as we filter back up again. Same thing with keyword history. I can add the same keywords I set up within my contextual targeting option. I only did a couple of them. I didn't even do all the keywords I had when I was doing contextual targeting. And already we have way more weekly impressions than we would if we were trying to get those people in the moment. Same time window applies. And we're going to get the same thing for interest. They call them interests. Again, they're using the past. The same way that you research topics under contextual targeting, we're pretty much targeting topics. They just call them interests because it's a different user intent. Anything under behavioral targeting, the interest in the past is not going to be as of immediate of an action for contextual targeting. Contextually, they're actively researching it versus someone who visited it potentially within the past 30 days could be in a totally different mindset. So take that into consideration for not only potentially your ad set structure and your campaign structure set up, but also the message that you put in front of them when you get to the next step of creating your ads. And then the last option is going to be broad targeting. And as you see, many of the things that we could research for targeting options completely went away. Broad targeting is Cora's machine learning option. And it's the one I recommend testing if you feel like you've exhausted all the other targeting opportunities and you also have a good conversion history within the platform. You are pretty much giving full reign to Cora to use the machine learning to find more users who perform similar behaviors. That's why I strongly recommend having a good conversion history within the platform. Cora even recommends that you should use this targeting option with a conversion optimized campaign. And that's set up at the campaign level. That's one of your campaign objectives because that'll better help match your ads to people more likely to convert. It could take a little time for it to start working, but this is the hands-off smart campaign style that Cora is offering. Wrapping up with some of the smaller ends, most likely you do want to include some specific locations. I typed in Wisconsin, the state where I live, but you can see we can get down to cities, certain DMA regions. If you want to, you can get down to the zip code level as well. And we did talk about audience exclusions. You have location exclusions too. Targeting options in Cora for device. You can target mobile and desktop will be the default option for targeting both at the same time. Personally, I like to break out my ad sets by device. 
I consistently see mobile have way more volume than desktop on Quora because people love to use the Quora app. If you want to break it out by specific platforms, you could do that too under each device category. For gender, the default option will be all genders, but depending on what product you sell and what audience you want to get in front of, you can choose the male, female, or unknown options. We already talked about audience exclusions, but one thing I did forget to mention is that you can exclude questions. When we were looking at bulk adding topics, we talked about how you can click on a topic and see if all the questions underneath that topic are ones you want to target. Well, sometimes you might find that majority of questions within a topic are extremely relevant, but you could find a few that squeak through that are like, I like most of the questions on this topic, but not these two, three, four, five, six. And then you could add them to the exclusion list within that ad set. In this example, for the most part, I've been talking about small business accounting software. Oh, for whatever reason, I'm making this up. Let's say an enterprise level question snuck into this one topic. I'm like, no, we don't deal with enterprise at all. We're purely small business, but I can exclude that one and save my budget for the relevant audience I want to hit that is purely small business. And those are our targeting options in Quora. This platform has a lot of unique ways you can reach your users, and sometimes you might have to do some digging. So if you wanna find out if your audience truly is on the platform, you can check out our video right here to get a better understanding of how you can research more topics, more questions, to better find where your audience might be researching on Quora. Some of the targeting options are very straightforward, while others might require you to do some additional digging, so that's why you should check out that video. But you might be surprised which options work for you. With audience targeting, contextual targeting, and behavioral targeting, you can see how we can focus on different user intents and market users differently at various phases of the funnel. And if you have any favorite ways that you like to research your audience or target them on Quora, let everyone else know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.